So thank you all for joining us today. And let's, uh, let's get started with uh, our topic, <clears throat> 2022 Digital Marketing Predictions and Trends. Uh, one thing we like to do over the past many years, I want to say over 15 years, we've been doing our predictions in the fall of uh, before the next year of what we see is coming. And we like to hold ourselves accountable for our 2021 or previous year's predictions. How do we do? <clears throat> so we'll touch, touch on that first, and then we'll uh, include a few resources in the appendix. If you've registered to attend the seminar, we'll send you a recap with a link uh, to the, the deck and the recording. And we will be posting this on our YouTube channel <clears throat> as well. So without further ado, let's talk a little bit about 2021. Uh, just a, a quick recap. And you can read, there's a full blown article or review on our blog of our 2021 predictions. And then our full 2022 predictions are also available on the SCMPDX blog, in case you're curious, and those links are included at the end of this presentation. But let's talk about 2021. <clears throat> so here are a couple of top 10 trends and our assessment. So one of, and these are, these predictions come from the, the entire Anvil team. Uh, there isn't anybody that doesn't include a prediction. And the rules of the road on our predictions for any year is that they're a little out there, perhaps contrarian, possibly um, <clears throat> you know, incendiary or controversial, but mainly they're not really safe bets. <clears throat> Facebook will continue to grow or maybe they'll shrink a little bit or whatever it is. We wanna try and take more of a stand so that when we nail them and give ourselves an A, it's pretty remarkable. <clears throat> so on the more safe side, uh, you know, we know the pandemic changed our behavior uh, collectively, but more importantly, we actually, it changed our behavior for good and that uh, permanently. And we feel that that wasn't a given <clears throat> early on, but now uh, we know that there are permanent behaviors that have changed in terms of remote work. Um, there's a more temporary, but possibly long-term impact on the great resignation, et cetera. So we gave ourselves an A minus on that, um, mainly because some of our clients and even at Anvil, we've tweaked our business model or who we talked to or how we talked to them through the pandemic. Examples would be our retail clients have had to radically uh, alter and, and take a digital transformation to e-commerce and have been largely successful. Uh, we like to think we play a role in that, but just so you know, pandemic has changed, permanently altered behavior of consumers and workers, everybody basically. Our next prediction was the digital transformation will continue. And you know, again, each of these has a full paragraph description of what that means. We only gave ourselves a B plus because we don't feel companies came far enough in the digital tra digital transformation. Too many had looked at um, I, I just holding back or being held up by culture mostly. Technology isn't typically the hold up. Budget might be, um, but we thought we'd see more of our clients embracing uh, digital or just companies in general. So uh, perhaps I'd say this this would be a, one of those safe carryover predictions that the tr transformation will continue this year, but the progress wasn't as far as we would have liked to have seen. Third predi prediction this year for 2021, we made a year ago or more is conversational marketing. So also a B plus, <clears throat> oh wait, I gave myself, gave ourselves two grades. Um, I meant to say C uh, because it was, uh, we had a disagreement internally, whether it was a B, B or a C, but basically conversational marketing, so AI-driven chatbots, et cetera, are prevalent more than you would know, but still not as much as you would think. Um, automation has, you know, machine learning, artificial intelligence has, has come a long way <clears throat> in just the last couple of years, and it, it gives marketers a lot more power and can do more with less, but very few uh, too few of our clients have relied more heavily on um, chatbots, text marketing, et cetera. So uh, let's call that a compromise of a C plus, B minus. Um, but we expect, again, a safe, this would be a safe <clears throat> delayed prediction, maybe not even for <clears throat> 2022, maybe 2023. Next up, brand social and ethical, social and ethical responsibility. So we have predicted that brands are going to be leading the way instead of following uh, their customers' feedback that we want socially, uh, economically, politically responsible organizations, uh, stances, uh, et cetera. 
fewer companies have done that, far fewer than we thought. Although <clears throat> you could argue as of some of the articles today, Nielsen just did a study today, they just came out today about how consumers engage and value brands that have a sense of purpose and a sense of responsibility to the environment, to, um, to social issues. And so I think it was just a slightly ahead of the curve. It's a safe bet for next year. And we'll see more of this. We started to see this trend four or five years ago. We've written about it, spoken about it, but we thought, it, you know, 2021 would be the year. It's more likely 2022. So we gave ourselves only a C plus. Increasing regulation of digital advertising. We gave ourselves a, an A plus here. Keep in mind, we predicted this in November of 2020, and it was mid-year where, where Facebook and Apple came out with their announcements or <clears throat> somewhere between, you know, February and May where, you know, the deprecation of third-party cookies, um, new <clears throat> privacy and security settings that make uh, tar ad targeting very, very difficult, if not nearly impossible. And Apple and Facebook led the way, but this was, be we predicted this months before <clears throat> it became a reality. So safe, safe bet in retrospect, but that's an A plus, one of our first. Um, got a couple more here, because each year we do 10 predictions. On the marketplaces challenging, effectively challenging Amazon, D plus. We thought that um, Target, Walmart, um, uh, Etsy, eBay, and others would start to really take a meaningful share of Amazon's market share. But right now they're still at 40% of the entire US retail market. They absolutely slay it. And for better or for worse, you know, much to the detriment of small uh, retail businesses, um, it, we did not see the challenge like we thought we would. I'm not sure that it's even safe to say in 2022, probably 2023 or four before, um, you know, sellers and marketers <clears throat> um, jump on this, but it might be as early as um, Q1, Q2 of next year because of the, the need for first party cookies and targeting is one way to do that is to get on to um, these, these marketplaces that have their own database to do more effective targeting like Amazon or Target, even Albertsons has developed their own first party uh, cookie platform, ad platform. So you'll see more of that happening. But that just means we missed the mark by at least a year. Uh, passage structured data gains traction. If you don't know what passage structured data is, don't worry, neither did, apparently does Google. Um, this was something we had hoped we'd see, um, but you know, it's, it's the idea of um, looking at the passages and using structured markup and understanding like statements, sentences, that sort of thing versus an entire page or just a single word in search. This is an SEO prediction that uh, we, we saw signals that that might happen. It did not happen. It might still happen though in the years to come. Voice search, <laughs> going mainstream. See, I, I predicted this three years ago and was wrong then. And the SEO team was optimistic that 2021 would be the year. And I don't think 2023 will be the year. Um, now, podcasting is the new normal. You can reach a lot of affluent audiences and, and certain segments, um, Gen Gen Y, even Gen Z, but voice search is different. That's the smart devices, smart speakers, personal digital assistants, and people just using it to at, uh, to search for things verbally. And you know, I think it's just going to be a slow, steady burn, not one particular year that will spike. But we're very disappointed we were wrong on this because we think voice search is the bee's knees. Personalization will increase as an X SEO factor. Yeah, B, being generous, I think the idea is that you take the idea of what you're used to with personalized email and then integrate those concepts into search. Google has all the information, knows who you are when you're, when you're logged in. Um, there's, a, there's a way to personalize searches far more than they are today. Um, they've made some progress with that. Certainly not the revolutionary focus. Like I wish we had predicted that uh, Facebook would rebrand as meta and, and double down on the metaverse. This is that kind of thing. We're hoping that would be the big win here. And again, I think we're too far ahead of Google's engineers on that one. And then we gave ourselves a B on increased reliance on influencer marketing. So we felt that through the pandemic, people would rely heavily on influencer marketing because they weren't going to go back to stores. We gave ourselves a B in that and that is true. Marketers have largely doubled down on influencer marketing. It hasn't been without its problems, credibility issues, transparency issues, reporting issues. But uh, in the end, what, the only reason that what slowed us down is that people went back to physical stores. Retail saw 15% growth this year, um, which, or, or maybe that was just this last quarter, it came out today. Um, the, the predictions I also read uh, today is that retail will be very sluggish next year, uh, physical retail. So we expect 
influencer marketing to be ratcheted up permanently and continue to go at a steady pace. But um, there was a bit of a boom this year, but not as much as we thought if people had stayed home more uh, and relied more on the shopping e-commerce shopping experience. So that wraps up our 10 top 10 trends. You could see if I was looking at this, we probably gave ourselves a B, B minus average uh, on a report card across all our 10 predictions, mainly because we're, we're, we're a little too edgy, a little too optimistic on how fast we thought brands and consumers would move on some of these things. But if we were to look back two years to our predictions or a year from now, look at these and see more of these, we'd give ourselves a higher grade because we're just a little above uh, ahead of the curve. So let's shift gears and talk about the 10 predictions and trends we see coming in digital marketing for 2022. The first, and this one's mine, is the metaverse will become a reality, virtual reality as it were. Um, and as much to my chagrin, um, I could go back to 15 years ago consulting with uh, a large computer brand on Second Life and an implementation there. And it was bizarre and awkward. And I think that's where the metaverse is today. There, there are a lot of good opportunities. Um, you can see the work that Roblox is doing, Chipotle Vans, Verizon, Fortnite. Uh, but if you look at the, um, the Facebook metaverse, uh, that there's the, the first iteration, like people don't even have legs. It looks like it's, you know, 1990s, um, you know, metaverse, uh, you know, not current. So there's the, it's the conundrum of um, uh, Pixar. Do you make things so realistic that they're believable, which is what they do with the backgrounds, or do you keep some cartoonishness in the characters so that they can, they're, they're clearly characters and not facsimiles of, of reality. So, you know, Toy Story type of thing. If you compare the very first Toy Story with Toy Story 3, the backgrounds are crystal clear, ultra real. The characters are a little shiny or more realistic, but they're still caricatures, right? Um, so I think that's where the metaverse is like probably five years out from being useful. Um, but doesn't mean brands are not getting in early. Um, big consumer CPG brands, luxury brands, which really have uh, my, my big foray last year was NFTs. Those will continue to grow. But uh, luxury brands got in early there. I think that you're going to see some of that here uh, in the metaverse. But I think it's more than a distraction. It is an investment. So Iceland uh, Tourism created the Icelandverse, and they absolutely mocked the living heck out of um, uh, Mark Zuckerberg. And, you know, just the idea of the metaverse being better than actually going to Iceland is kind of the takeaway. Like, I, I do want to experience this amazing, um, you know, continent or I island that they have and uh, not be content with just the metaverse. And the other as aspect, you know, so it can be gimmicky for now, <clears throat> but brands are like really trying to create communities. There's like 150 million worth of virtual real estate sold in the metaverse. Um, so there's investment being made, but the big investment is, Facebook, Microsoft, some of the big providers, platform providers investing in key technologies and their own ecosystems. That's what's really per, uh, powering this prediction for next year. It's also very pandemic friendly. So if you read articles and different trade pubs, you can buy NFTs or invest in the metaverse without any uh, uh, supply chain or pandemic issues because it's all virtual. And then uh, I already mentioned that Microsoft and others are, are coming in after Microsoft or after Facebook to do their part. And the research is saying that, you know, there's growing credibility with consumers that they're starting to believe this may be noteworthy and worth their attention. Um, I would say that's a good sign. It's actually earlier than I would have expected people to say this is real. They need to see more examples of it working. Roblox would be the first place I would start to look at how, how a brand is creating a community, sense of community that has some real economic power to it potentially over time. So that's our first prediction. It's about metaverse will go from concept a year ago, actually um, many years ago conceptually, but in reality, once, once Facebook said, this is gonna be a thing, everybody was paying attention. And the, you know these companies are acquiring left and right, the different, uh, different players in the space. So look for this to be explosive next year. The next prediction is web 3.0. So that's the next, the next level of web. So web 1.0 was graphical interface, the World Wide Web, right? Some e-commerce, some banner ads, you can browse basically, and some infrastructure. And then web 2.0 is adding the social networks, the mobile component, cloud computing. And then 3.0 is AI-driven machine learning, decentralized architecture, think blockchain, edge computing, right? So that's where the web is going. So 
let's talk about the web 3.0 and how it will become far more ubiquitous next year where um, a lot of people uh, in, in our ecosystem were not even talking web 3.0 uh, this year until recently. And a lot of that is the most of the buzz is around consumers concern over their own data security with so many breaches and ransomware attacks. 3.0 might be the solution to a lot of these security issues. And brands that are uh, diving in and, and leading from the front with, uh, with a focus on data safety and, and personal privacy protection will, will win in this, in this uh, sort of battle for real estate and my share of mind in this area in 3.0. So those brands are gonna do well because it's still every, every day I'm getting an update of another platform that was hacked or ransomware. And that's not, that's not a good sign. So we need to be smarter about that. At the base of it though is blockchain. So you know, again, our big push last this last year was with NFTs. Um, I'm not a huge fan of crypto. Um, if you were to look at my investment portfolio, you'd see why. Um, you know, the entire Fed, you know, our economic uh, financial system is based on the US dollar, which obviously is, is going through its challenges recently. But the reality is all banking financial institutions um, don't know what to do with, with crypto and are, you know, concerned, if not if, I'm definitely afraid of it. So um, blockchain, however, is bigger than just crypto or NFTs. It is an entire way to track um, from farm to table, from, from source in the earth to ship to your door, um, tracking materials use, consumption, ownership changes, logistics. It's a way for us to understand our products and be more informed. And then eventually, for, as a marketer standpoint, tracking, trackability. So tracking products through the lifestyle, life cycle of, you know, of the customer and the, of the product itself. So look for blockchain to be talked about more and more, crypto less and less, uh, NFTs less and less comparatively to the buzz they have now because they'll become also brands like email, social media, et cetera. But blockchain will become more of a conversation because it's such an enabling spine to all of this. And lastly, additional technologies will flourish under 3.0. Uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, um, augmented reality in a big way. That is, uh, I think where the metaverse will have more success is, a, is in the hybrid world of real and virtual versus feel, full virtual reality where everybody has an Oculus Lift, Rift, sorry, Oculus um, lens and they're doing, you know, looking at things in a virtual world and punching their TV sets and their family members on accident. Um, I, I think that's still sort of gaggy right now, but where it works is remote working will really drive VR and AR so you can work remotely in this COVID slash pandemic friendly uh, environment and still be more connected. So that, a lot of that will drive 3.0 as well. Our third prediction, video marketing will become vital. I, I, I've been speaking about this for probably 12 years is the video is the highest life form on the internet. It is the most engaging. It's four media formats in one. At the high level, it's video. Um, you strip. You can strip the audio out for a podcast. You can strip. Uh, you can strip out images, uh, still images from the video for you know social media and other image-based platforms for marketing, and then strip out the text and transcribe it into an article or, or a blog post or whatever. So, video is engaging. It's memorable. It's affordable. And I have friends that have the the iPhone 13 Pro and are filming videos on it. And you can't really tell the difference between that and a, and a 4K red camera anymore. I mean, there's some lens quality perhaps in certain types of shots, but people are able to basically film movies now and take, take professional grade photography photos with, a, with a, the new iPhones and even the new Samsungs. Um, so I think it makes video more approachable, more affordable than ever. And um, the inflection point is a combination of these insane new phones, these thousand dollar plus phones, um, cheaper and cheaper editing, more and more features within applications like Instagram and others that make it easier and easier to edit. And more and more people taking video, consuming, producing it and sharing it. So YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok are, are completely fueled or a lot of their content is, is, is video driven now. And even Pinterest has more focus on video. So everybody's doing it. And then, you know, influencers have a, uh, are leveraging video versus fo just photography. Uh, they're doing product unboxings, live shopping is a new, you know, is a thing starting this year and will definitely grow next year. So remote shopping through the platforms like Instagram, those experiences, and then the idea of virtual commerce, e-commerce, 
video commerce as well, um, where people are buying as, as YouTube makes it easier and smarter to, to tag certain products. And then just, you see it, mouse over it, click it in the video, and you're taken to a website to purchase. That's where everything is going. So um, with that in mind, keep in mind, what hasn't changed for us in 12 plus years of, of evangelizing video is you still have to optimize your content to be seen. Otherwise it's a forest falling, a tree falling in a forest. So you want to make sure the name of the, 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 the file name of the video, the title, the description, the use of tags, uh, embedded URLs, all of that uh, is critical and, and, and more critical than ever with such a large volume of content being produced every day. And so as you're planning for 2022 and you're thinking, okay, I, I agree with you, video is a thing. Explainer videos are huge. Um, entertainment style videos, so a little higher production value, telling a story is good, but just simple product demos, um, interactive videos, software tutorials, that's all good. And then video blogging, blogging, um, you know, you can put those up on your YouTube channel for free and tell stories instead of writing blog posts, you could speak them, right? And then you could also transcribe them perhaps. So. That's where video marketing is going to punch kind of the why and the how. Our fourth prediction is MUM will strengthen Google search. So this is an SEO team prediction. MUM is short for multitask unified model. We probably all know what that is, uh, but just in case. And what it does is it uses artificial intelligence to understand the context behind somebody's search. And so it's dramatically simplifying everything down to goes through a model and creates results instead of worrying about index, retrieval, and ranking. So it's this is kind of the um, what I call the, the patent sort of description of what it is. So it's using, again, something you're very familiar with, the T5 text-to-text -text framework. Uh, and it's, at this point, estimated to be a thousand times more powerful than BERT, which is an earlier algorithmic update in the last uh, couple of years, meaning improved accuracy, improved streamlining. So Google's attempt, this is their first, this is their a major attempt to fully answer a question within the search engine result page. So if I ask um, a long question, I might generate, um, this is the best answer we call zero click or voice search, back to voice search on a smart speaker, is here's our best answer. This could be the entire result page is directly answering every aspect of that question. It'll, it'll display a little bit differently. So what that means for SEO pros like us and for our clients and everybody else is, your SEO strategies need to provide a, a level of depth that's uh, essentially unprecedented from what you've seen in previous SEO efforts. So um, a lot more context, a lot more depth. That's where SEO is going, if we're correct, that mom is going to really take hold. Like, again, this is a little edgier, not so obvious. And we've been wrong before, but this one feels pretty good. Our fifth prediction is over-the-top streaming will gain traction as an ad targeting option. Now. Uh, for those of you not familiar with over the top, it's if you have a connected TV and you're watching um, Fubo or YouTube TV or anybody else, you get these ads streaming in on your TV because it's internet powered. So uh, basically, what that will grow radically in this next year in our prediction because Facebook, Google, and Apple have restricted third party co uh, cookies, which makes advertising, as we mentioned, much, much harder to do because we're losing critical targeting information. So we're, everybody's moving to first party cookies or equivalent. Google's attempt at flock may not work, but you can Google that if you want to learn more. But the point is this, social platforms need to stay competitive. So live stop shopping, which is another one of our sub predictions um, will become more prevalent as will integrated commerce within social and video and over the top streaming was one aspect of that. And then marketers are going to explore alternative platforms, including first party data marketplaces. Again, already mentioned this, the Targets, the Walmarts, and now it'll be, you know, Albertsons and, who you knows, Starbucks and others are going to be unleashing their first party data marketplaces and allowing access and monetizing those as effectively ad, ad uh, networks. And then lastly, with the growth of connected TV and live streaming, live shopping, et cetera, OTT will blossom like never before because everything's coming together. It's all pushing us to come up with new ways to target as marketers, the consumer, and OTT will be a big beneficiary if you, if you blend in the targeting options with um, you know, v-commerce and, and live streaming, live shopping, continuing to grow in popularity. 
Our sixth prediction is more brands will move to a direct to consumer e-commerce model. Now this I would say is a pretty safe bet, one of the, the lowest risk predictions. So we're saying that the pandemic has forced this digital transformation or migration for many brands. Uh, affordable web plat platforms are making it easier and easier for brands to jump on, have a really robust e-commerce presence, whether it's a, a Shopify or some other platform. And so um, even large channel centric brands like Nike are going direct to consumer. So they're, they're now pulling out of, um, is it, uh, uh, what's the big retailer? Um, it's not pay less shoes, but uh, one of those others discount mega retail footwear brand, um, retailers is losing the Nike account, which is going to be massive for them. Obviously, Nike does this, so they have more control over the brand. Mostly, they have more margin. And they know everybody has a smartphone or a computer and can get online and order the shoes. The challenge with this that um, Nike is probably already experiencing is the, the, the amount of returns and all that logistical nightmare. And so e-commerce is not immune to logistical issues, right? To the to the bottlenecks that are happening with the pandemic and the great resignation. So um, I think in some cases they brands like maybe not Nike, but others will will be more measured in their approach and not that overnight drop, you know, a bunch of nationwide accounts. Now again, the shipping is probably more difficult to go to um, a bunch of, you know, big retailers of high volume, but it's more efficient. Plus you get closer to a lot more people versus sending 50,000 pairs instead of the three retailers you're sending them to 50,000 people. So that, that's a big headache, but that's where it's going. And these, you can see the growth chart here. It's in billions, 174 billion is a direct to consumer e-commerce sales. And, and that's grown uh, over the last five years. Yeah, it'll more than double. Marketplaces are basically providing additional channels, not just to sell, but to obviously market. So we can reach our existing customers in new ways or more importantly, reach new customers um, through channels that we have not previously hit. So that's the beauty of uh, that, that direct to consumer will drive more of those first party marketplaces and first party data options. Our seventh prediction is retail media networks will grow significantly. So, uh, you know, as we've mentioned multiple times, there's a loss of third party tracking in terms of cookies is forcing organizations to totally rethink their targeting uh, from first party to second party to third party. Um, I'm sorry, from third party down to first party. So build, develop your own network or second party where there's a shared access among a select few. So marketplaces, as I mentioned, Target and Walmart, they're leveraging their first party data to provide new ad revenue opportunities so that we, um, they can circumvent the restrictions of Apple and Facebook and others by um, as long as people are shopping through these mega um, retailers like Target and Walmart, um, oh, ignore that. Uh, we'll be done, don't worry. Oh my God. Gotta love Zoom. Jerks. Okay, so new ad revenue opportunities and then building your own. So Lowe's, I mentioned, Albertsons, like they're building their own and for, it's for themselves for now, but look for them to partner with a few, you know, co-marketing co opportunities with select non-competitors. There were, you know, like some of their manufacturers, Lowe's Carry may start expanding their networks and collaborating to get better first data par uh, party data options for targeting. Our eighth prediction is third party cookie data will sunset naturally. So this is like a, been the frightening discussion all year. And now we're realizing we believe, and it's a little edgy, is that marketers are gonna be adapting to third party data loss. And so therefore the reliance will decrease. And eventually, and while Google doesn't have a good answer with Flock, they're looking on a, a viable solution that can scale and that will be adopted as more of an industry standard. And we suspect that will be reached as early as mid-year, optimistically. So as that standard is adopted, we think that the cookie tracking will naturally sunset as this better, these better solutions or solution appear. And so we think by the end of next year, you'll start to see coverage about how it's sunsetting, less reliance. Um, so it won't be complete, but it will be under significant progress at that point. Our ninth prediction, influencer marketing will fuel social commerce. So Basically, we know that COVID tested influencer marketing, influencer, influencer marketers, um, influencers, let's call it, as a viable um, channel for selling. So what that means is that 
despite the fact that there are some authenticity issues, some financial feasibility issues, some tracking, those linger, but they're being addressed every day to a degree and, and mitigating some of those concerns. So um, one way to look at that is that everybody will look at this idea of a, of a solution for social commerce that everybody adopts so that it can become uh, kind of a new standard. And you know, we'll see if that happens this year, but we do know there's going to be a lot more accountability and transparency in the year to come uh, through you know, federal or local mandates on, on um, the authenticity and, and disclosure of influencers. But again, with um, the uncertainty of physical retail, influencers will definitely have a place. And then micro influencers in particular will experience growth uh, due to their relevance and authority within their micro niches, as it were. And then lastly, multicultural marketing will go mainstream. So we think that post-pandemic world, it's more connected than ever. Uh, you know, it's a global economy, it's a global workforce, and people can work and be remote. Um, you can reach people uh, at their home, not just at their office, anywhere in the world. And consumers are basically hungry for those international or, or um, uh, multicultural content assets like Squid Game, for instance, um, or the heist out of, 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 of France. So people want shows and other, and you know, uh, K-pop. You know, people are starving for that kind of content, and brands are looking to increase their their reach in a global economy. So in, uh, overlay the idea of DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion focus for brands looking to be socially conscious and address systemic racism and so forth is the hiring and marketing they're gonna be doing is, is driving the opportunity and the need to be more global in thinking, to the messaging content, services and products and how things are measured. So we think this is a, a pretty solid guess. It probably won't go as far as we want it to, but we should see meaningful progress on, on you know, more awareness for the Latin or Hispanic community or other underserved communities, not just African-American here in the US, but um, Asian, um, you know, uh, Eastern European, whatever it is, um, South American, et cetera. So in a recap, these are the top 10 trends. Metaverse, Web 3.0, video marketing, mum, over the top streaming, direct to consumer, um, retail media networks, third party, Cookie data will, as a result of all these things, start to sunset naturally. Influencer marketing, in particular, will fuel social commerce. And multicultural marketing will become more of a mainstream, not a mystery of specialists, but every agency will offer a multicultural marketing option, and brands will be pursuing um, you know, those solutions. So here's a couple other you know, trends for you to think about that are more, um, you know, more sentient, that are less, uh, less risky to product. Uh, to predict. COVID variants will continue to shift consumer behavior, you know, with Omicron and, and some other, um, you know, conversations. And as long as people aren't getting vaccinated or, or mask up, uh, COVID will be with us probably forever. I may not have the 100 year impact that it did with 800,000 deaths in the US alone. Um, privacy issues will continue to be a concern. Political polarization will continue to be a certain, uh, concern. Um, you can be on either side of that and both do good and or make money. Uh, blockchain, um, just, you know, cryptos and NFTs in particular, um, the, the, the use of hybrid events to market. So not just the, the conference or the trade show, but a combination of webinars and virtual conferences. And then keeping in mind inflation. Are you going to be on the right side of inflation? How do you hedge against that um, in terms of keeping employees and customers um, as things cost more naturally? Um, I thought this was going to be an issue last year. Um, I think it's unavoidable this year. So these are a bunch of the articles and resources that we use in this presentation as a, as a resource uh, or as a source. Um, again, you can, you'll can you get a copy of this. We'll put it um, uh, somewhere safe where you can uh, click on it on Dropbox or something. And then you can get a recording of this uh, on our YouTube channel. We'll, we do a blog recap. So. Uh, we have a ton of free resources in our insight section. Um, so we have articles, white papers, ebooks, uh, cheat sheets, podcasts, webinars. Um, check them out. I encourage you to sign up for our monthly email newsletter, follow us on social. And if you have any questions about digital marketing or this presentation, you can reach out to me, uh, kent at anvilmedia.com. That's only for the, the listeners here today. So let me stop sharing and see do we have any questions? I would say. 
throw them into chat. Um, I'm having time to answer one or two questions. Um, otherwise, we will uh, wrap up and uh, get a copy of this to you when we're done. Looks like I have, I do have one question from, uh, from the team here, going through one of my other channels, Slack, is um, where do we think Facebook is gonna go as a brand and, and how well is the meta rebranding being uh, you know, accepted? And from my research, it, it looks like consumers are very doubtful and dubious about Facebook. It's not a trusted brand and rebranding didn't instill any further trust. In fact, it created more trust concerns that the, the rebrand has not gone well in the consumer's eyes. Um, we'll see if, if the distraction from the Facebook papers, uh, what we call the metaverse, which I know they've been working on for years, but uh, convenient timing to try and distract from some of their privacy uh, and um, you know polarization of our entire society is, is um, front and center. It's hard to say if the metaverse will be more intriguing and, and, and not seen as a pure distraction. So while I predicted that metaverse will become more of a reality for brands in this next year, and maybe for some consumers, early adopters, I don't think it can save Facebook per se, but I'm, I might be an outlier. So with that said, um, I wanna be cognizant of our time. So um, we are going to wrap up here and we hope to see you um, next month in January. We'll send a teaser out. We have a, a calendar on our website so you can see where we, what our calendar looks like. And I will, tell you right now, um, the next um, workshop will be in January, it'll be on video marketing, everything you know on video marketing. So one thing we're doing is, is providing more, more color around our predictions um, by giving some more guidance. So, um, and then one last, last question for a run out of time here. What is the best way to reach out to the multicultural community? So uh, thanks for that question, April. Um, what I would say is for everybody that's interested is there are agencies that specialize in cultural marketing and, and it's always good to read what they're doing or even engage them. The other thing to do is go to within your company to those that are following the multicultural groups and start a dialogue with them and potentially start a leadership committee and start to uh, get start with your internal before you bring an external consultant, build some of that messaging and awareness internally and have it be a cultural bottom up, top down sort of thing. That would be my recommendation. Um, but there, if you just Google, there are a bunch of multicultural marketing agencies out there. That's the hot thing. Um, so keep that in mind. So with that said, we're going to wrap up today. Thank you so much for your time. And we will uh, be in touch soon. And hope to see you in January for our video marketing webinar. Take care. <laughs>